The next topic we will be talking about is clustering. Clustering is a technique of grouping rows together that share similar values across a number of variables. Imagine you have thousands of rows of data and you have 20 to 30 different variables. It will be very hard to put all those put all the put all your observations into one or two groups depending on either variable 1 or variable 2 or variable 4. In most cases all those variables will come into contact and give you an underlying structure. So clustering technique will allow you to find the underlying structure in your data. Let me put into an example. This picture that we have on the screen is a picture of a spiral. For a human eye, this is a very easy process to identify each of the lines of the spiral and put them into different groups. But if, if you were to solve this problem in a, in a computer case, I'm trying to find underlying structure between on X and Y coordinates. In most cases, algorithm will be able to pick up your upper half or lower half or lower left corner, lower right corner, upper right corner, some type of some type of Cartesian way of identifying since I have Cartesian coordinates. So clustering methods will be will allow you to be able to identify, find underlying structures on, on your data set with jump. And the different different types of clustering methods are implemented just to give you an idea. By using jump you will have access to hierarchy clustering and different versions of hierarchical clustering as you as I will show you the dialog box in a minute. And you'll have access to k-means clustering and also new in jump 11 is the self-organizing maps that you will have access to use to cluster your data. And each of these clustering methods have different ways and different reasons to use it. Let's go through them one at a time. First let, first let me show you how you will access to a cluster platform. It will be under analyze multivariate methods, and cluster. Like any other dialog box in Jump, cluster dialog box is also organized in a way that you have, you, you will have a list of your columns and you will select the ones that you want to explore. In this case, I'm trying to explore my X and Y columns and I can either select them and drag it to the Y columns box or while they're selected, I can click on Y columns and they will populate the box for me. And then I mentioned earlier that you have access to hierarchical clustering and also k-means clustering where self-organizing maps will be under k-means clustering. Now before we move forward, let's talk about which each of these clustering methods are and how they are helpful and what cases will be best to use them. So I will close the clustering dialog box right now. So hierarchical clustering is most appropriate for small tables up to several thousand rows. And I say and I say small tables and I said several thousand rows. In the in the scale of data sets being or being analyzed, explored with the clustering methods, thousand rows kind of small data set. It combines all these rows in a hierarch hierarchical sequence in as a form of a tree. In jump this in jump this tree is also called a dendrogram. So you have the tree and then you have the branches coming out of the tree. Now another th another thing to keep in mind when you're building clusters is number of clusters. With the hierarchical clustering, you can choose number of clusters that you like after the tree is built. So you can have a quick view of your tree and the dendrogram and you can decide where to cut your cut your tree. Let's look at it as an example. I have this data set and this is a list of about 33 countries and they have the birth and death statistics for each of these countries and i want to put them in an organ in, in a way i want to put them in a certain clusters so they will have same birth and date character birth and death characteristics not necessarily depending on where they are it will only be dependent on the birth and death rates in the country how i would go about doing that i would go under analyze multivariate methods cluster and I will select my birth and death records as my Y columns and click OK. What will happen is it will go through my data set and build this dendrogram tree for me. And if you look at this, it's, it's sort of like sideways tree and I have my bottom trunk and it branches out and it branches out again. 
What the standard ground tells me is that there is some relationship between Afghanistan and Zaire, depending on your birth and death rates. And also there is a relationship between Austria and Japan. And I mentioned earlier that you can decide how many clusters that you want. Under this red triangle where almost all your options are hidden and jump in every other platform, you can decide number of clusters. You can decide how many clusters that you would like to show in this data set. And I just picked number four, it depending on how comfortable or how much differentiation do you want to make in your data set, you can make this tree as thin or as thick as possible. So let's stick with four. And what will happen is I have the diamond marked saying that I have four trees. One, two, three. I have four clusters. One, two, three, and four. And each of these clusters have its own character characteristics. And how do how do I use these clusters? What I can do is, I under again, red triangle, I can save these clusters. But before we go to clusters, another way of looking at this tree is a constellation plot. Constellation plot is similar to a network diagram that you will find some other platforms you probably saw, saw it on Facebook or some other type of networking. And here you can also see visually my Afghanistan and Zaire on the set, one branch of a tree. Venezuela, Mexico, Malaysia, India, and Algeria are another branch of tree. This will be very helpful to identify if you have a, whole, a lot of different variables so you can bring it down to a spatial view so you can identify if there is an underlying structure between in your data. Another way to use that, I can come back and save my clusters on my data set and jump will create a new column on my data set as you see here and label it as cluster. A great way of looking at this data would be I can go to my graph builder. Under graph builder, if I drag my country into my map shape, Jump will recognize this is a geographical data that I'm looking at. And if I want to take this data set and color it with my clusters, and I can see the correlations visually, I'll go back to my data set. I want to make sure that I represent the whole earth and I can see where Canada, United States, Australia and most of the Europe, Western world and China has similar birth and date, birth and death statistics whereas Russia and South Africa have different underlying structure and I can see most of South American countries and tropical countries have similar birth and death, death rates as well. And I can, when I'm done with this, I can save this or I can modify my background map to look prettier. I can say, show me just a simple earth. This will be a great way of representing your data. And once I'm happy with it, I can use my selection button, copy, and paste it on my, once I copy it on my clipboard, I can paste it my PowerPoint over document. So this is how we would approach the hierarchical clustering. And just to reiterate, hierarchical clustering is appropriate for small tables. And you can choose the number of clusters once you build the tree. Second item on our list of clustering is k-means clustering. And before I go there, let me close these windows so we will have more real estate to work with. And k-means clustering is appropriate for larger tables, and you have up to a th hundreds of thousands of rows. And this makes it fairly good guess as a cluster seed points. It starts with it'll start with an, an guess guess of what the center seed points are, and then it iteratively assign points to these clusters and rec recalculate the cluster centers. And the difference between hierarchical clustering and k-means clustering is that you have to specify the number of clusters before you start the process. And that makes sense because if I say I want three clusters, it will assign three center points to my cluster seeds and then iteratively go through each of these process, each of these observations to assign them to more appropriate cluster. And let's look at this as an example again. I have the data set for cytometry. It's a cytometry readings. And if I just look at the data, let's look at the data for a second. If I want to see the difference between, let's just see if there's any kind of correlation. I'm trying to fit my 
CD8 data, for example, to my CD4 data. And if I see if there's any kind of relationship, it's like an individual, and I can see there are two separate groups. But I want to be able to specify this with other variables as well. So let's look at our clustering methods, see how they will perform. Under Analyze, Multivariate Methods, Cluster. And I will select all my variables, put into my Y columns. Instead of hierarchical, now I will select K-means clustering. And I'll leave the I will leave the default options on and I will not go into any more details here and say OK. What will happen is it will give me the iterative clustering platform. And this is where you will also find self-organizing map, which we will cover next. Let's leave it as K-means clustering. And the clutter option will give you choice to clean out outliers, basically. Declutter your data set. So you will be focusing on the more general explanation of your data. Again, just to keep in mind, the clustering is an exploratory data analysis tool, not necessarily predicting. But once you create these clusters, you can use them as a predictive column as well. So I will select my number of columns as being three, and I will say go. What will happen now is it built three separate clusters for me and put them into separate groups and says I have 1100 for cluster one, 2500 cluster two, 1300 cluster three. And also gives me the means for each of these variables where each of these clusters fit. And I, like I did earlier, once you build a cluster, you can do a by, by plot and you can see how each of these clusters fit on my data set. And what you notice here is that it uses the principal components, which we'll be covering the next section of this WebEx. In principal components, we were trying to take all these variables and make them as make them as, as descriptive as possible and create two principal components. Um, not two, you can, you can have as many principal components that you're, you're comfortable with, but this by plot, by plot we're looking at first two. And then you can see the concentration of these data points in different clusters. And like I did, or like I talked about earlier, you can save your clusters to your data table. You can save a formula that creates these clusters that you might want to use later on in another data set to see, see if your clusters will hold. And just another thing to look at here is the scatter plot matrix, and you can see each of these variables and how they relate to each other with different clusters. This is another way of looking at it. And let me close this, and next topic I would like to cover here is the self-organizing maps. And again, we'll follow the same myth, same idea that we talked about with the hierarchical clustering and k-means clustering. The, what is it good for? What is it and what's good for? Self-organizing maps are not only to form clusters, but also to form them in a particular layout on the grid so that the points in the clusters are near to each other, as if it's a map in this, in, in this multivariate space. So let's let's look at that. Let's look at the example, and then maybe it will become clearer in that sense. I have this IRS data set. This is a very, fam this is a very famous data set. It's been used a lot on exploratory data analysis, especially in the multivariate world. So let's see how we will. Let me show you what output looks like first. It's so a my self-organizing map. Let's look at put this aside under analyze multivariate methods cluster, and I will, I'll select all the variables that I have since I don't know which one will be more descriptive, put into my Y columns. Under the options, I will select K-means and say OK. In the K-means platform, now I can select my method to be self-organizing map, and you can change the number of clusters to whatever, however many you're comfortable with. And then I will say go. What will happen is, again, organize my data into three separate clusters, where there are 38 observations for cluster one, 62 for cluster two, and also collected the means for 
each of these clusters. And I can come back and look at my biplot by plot now. And I can see, if you remember in the chemist clustering, they were kind of close to each other, but way off from each other in some sense. In the self-organizing map, you will see as if this is a map, these clusters are very close to each other geographically in the principal components space. Now let's go back to how what we started with in our data set. We had a we had a spiral and we were trying to identify which clusters of each of these colors fit into. So let me open my data set spiral data set and I went through all these analysis and I built different clustering algorithms to identify which one will be more useful. Let's go to my graph builder and then look at the picture. I have my x coordinate, y coordinate. It's my old data set, they're all in black. Now I want to color by Let's start with the k-means clustering and see what it looks like. So I can see visually that k-means clustering divided my data into three separate groups. And I can see here 120 degrees in each direction. So it took my space and divided into three separate groups, 360 degree circle. So I'll divide them by three and now 120 degrees on each color. But if I want to see what the board nearest neighbor, hierarchical nearest neighbor. It's very similar to k-means clustering, but you can see the difference where I have a lot of blues and greens. My reds on this part are very small. And if you, if you notice it, it's taking my x and y coordinates and dividing them into, in some, in some sense, a geographic presentation. But if I use my single hierarchical clustering methods, I can see clearly which ones of these spirals my initial clusters were in. So there are different methods and different hierarchical clustering methods or k-means clustering. Different clustering algorithms will be more helpful in your way, in your analyzing your data, exploring your data. I would recommend there is no saying one fits all, one is better than the other. It will depend on your case and jump makes it easy to identify, easy to use, which one will be more beneficial for your work.